This segment is brought to you by Full Sail University. Hey guys, so today I really wanted to get more into the MK802 Android PC that we also sell in the hack shop if you're interested. I wanted to have a little bit more fun with it, turn my Android device into a remote control. And this could be your Android cell phone or an Android tablet if you wanted to. Pretty much anything that you can access the Google Play Store on, you can do this little, kind of a little hack with it. So first off, you needed to download this new image from MiniAnd for the MK802. The original operating system that you see here doesn't quite work with the Droid Mote remote control app, so we have to update it to some new firmware. This new firmware from MiniAnd will basically enable the MK802 to access and to use the Droid Mote client that is on your cell phone or your tablet. Now, to get this image onto your your MK802, pretty much do the same thing that we did last week with all those different Linux distros. You just use Disk Imager on Windows or your favorite program like DD in Linux to flash the image onto your micro SD card and just boot it up into your MK802. When you do so, it's going to look just like the original operating system. But don't panic, the firmware has flashed onto the image so you're good to go and hopefully it booted into the micro SD card instead of the original firmware. Now I did pull up the Lilliputing website and this had a whole lot of directions on how to install this image onto the actual firmware um, inside the MK802, but it was like using this live suit program on Windows and going through like 12 different steps. So I just decided Disk Imager is so much easier, so why not use that on a micro SD card? Big deal, I had to buy a micro SD card that's like eight gigs. I'm not too worried about that. It was like 15 bucks on Amazon or whatever. So, you know, big deal. So anyway, once you have that ready to go and you've booted into it, it may take a few minutes to boot. Go into your Google Play Store and you search for this thing called Droid Mode Server. So you'll notice that Droid Mode Server is going to cost about 250 or maybe like 280 now. I'm not quite sure of the exact amount. I already paid for it, so I was like, that's cool. It's only $2.50 to get a remote control app for my phone and I can access it from any sort of tablet that I want to. I'm okay with this. So I went ahead and installed it and then I just stuck it down here in my applications. So it's up here, Droid Mode Server. Now I have that running. And then on my phone, I can go ahead and download the Droid Mote client app. Now this version is free. You only have to pay the $2.50 once, which is really nice. Now to get them connected after you have both of them installed, go into your apps and go into your Droid Mote client. It looks kind of like this. It's kind of plain and simple and there's not much to it. You would think that you'd just automatically be able to get it connected but you have to make sure that you're on the same Wi-Fi network for both the MK802 and your phone, or you can set up tethering on your phone as well. And then you need to click that big green button on the MK802 screen. So you click that with your keyboard, and it's gonna give you an IP address. Now on that IP address, you wanna type this in. So you click down here on the settings, and click connect and enter in the IP address that you also see on your MK802. So hopefully this is correct. 10.73.31.197. Hit connect. And you wanna give it a moment to actually connect to it or else it might get a little confused. So if I move it around on here on the phone, ah, now you can see my mouse is moving on the screen on the MK802, that is so cool. Now if I go back a couple of times, anything that I do on this phone, whether it's hitting back on here and going to the home menu or, you know, click on, on the little house, the little home menu button, it's going to do all the same stuff on the MK802. So, for example, let's go into a video game. And to click on anything, I gotta just press a hard click. Okay. Now I can go into Angry Birds, for example. So I can click on the big button on my remote, and I can go up here to start playing Angry Birds. Skip through all the extra stuff. Hi. So 
it's a little bit harder to actually play a game on here. There we go. Oh, and I totally screwed that up. <laughs> I really don't think I'm going to end up hitting the piggy. <laughs> so it is a little bit harder to play on here, as you'll notice with certain things. There are a couple of different sections that you can use on the phone as well. So the first one is the mouse, where you can just move around on here just like any other mouse. The second one are directional keys. So you have the you know left, right, up, and down, and you can also hit the middle one for home. You can hit back, search, power button to turn it on and off, the home key, of course, and settings. The third one, even though it, it looks kind of like a, almost like a Windows one, it's a, uh, it's a music box. So you have the choice to play any kind of music that you want, go forwards and backwards, whatever you like with music. And the last one is pretty cool. This is a game pad. So you have your directional key right here, your directional pad, and you can also hit right and left, up and down, all those little keys and you have the right side trigger over here and you can use the different keys and play video games with the, that as well. Makes it very fun. So there are quite a few cons. It's a little unresponsive at times and it is easy to switch from one tab to another on the phone. For example, if I'm messing around on here with my mouse and I'm looking at my MK802 the whole time, I might accidentally move all the way down here and hit the play button on the music and all of a sudden I'm wondering, why is my mouse not working? That can be kind of annoying. So it might be easier with a tablet. So if you guys have tried a tablet with the MK802 with Droid Mode, let me know, because I'd like to know how easy that one is. Also, it's not free, of course, but it is pretty close, and it'll dis disconnect after a while of no use. So you can't actually sit on your couch for a really, really long time, press pause on a movie, and expect for that to actually happen and you have to start the server up on the MK802 every single time you want to start using it. But, as said earlier, it's really easy to set up and it's really easy to use as you can see and it gives you one more way to use your Android devices all as one. Now stay tuned because coming up, we'll be joined by Senor Jiffy Pop and why war dialing is still relevant. Check it out. You guys know that the mobile app industry is on fire right now. Well, get this, Full Sail University's online mobile development bachelor's degree program can teach you the skills you need to take advantage of those emerging opportunities. Now, in this degree, you'll learn both the programming and business sides of mobile development, so you can take the concepts, develop, deploy, and market an application from start to finish. You'll explore the advanced programming languages, visual fame frameworks, usability principles, and app development for iOS and Android operating system. Now, through Full Sail's Project Launchbox program, students receive a MacBook Pro preloaded with industry software, plus iOS and Android devices. Courses are delivered through Full Sail's immersive online educational platform, which maximizes the capabilities of the Mac, giving you a learning experience like no other. Between the App Store and Google's online Play Store, over 50 billion apps have been downloaded with no signs of slowing down. So if you're ready to master the technology and software to compete in this rapidly growing industry, visit fullsale.edu slash HAK5 to learn more about this online degree program.